Sup nerds, I'm Tom. I'm Wes. Today we're going to talk about the sequel, in a way, to Whistle Stop called Whistle Mountain. <laughs> Whistle Mountain is a pretty unique, like, uh, a blend of mechanics, kind of worker placement-ish with your uh, big dirigibles, your... Your the, dirigibles? I don't know, right? Isn't that what they're called? Your airships? Yeah. What does dirigible mean? As a man, it means a dirigible airship, especially one with a rigid structure. Oh, look at that. All right. It's a All right. airship. <laughs> so they do kind of act like workers. Uh, there are spots, like, along the edge of the board that you can uh, put them up to to you know, gain things, uh, gain polyominoes. It's another thing is you can place polyominoes out there to build. You're building up in, like, this cavern. And the polyominoes are, have multiple, like, reasons for them. And there's, uh, this water's coming up. Like, there's a, there's kind of a lot going on here. It's not like a heavy game, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more than meets the eye, I want to say. Multiple moving parts to yeah, keep, kind that's of keep true. an eye on. True. So the bulk of the gameplay is placing these dirigibles onto the board and, you can either go and buy a building to build, you can buy um, like an upgrade, you can buy the actual polyominoes, or you can come and place them down here, and then you collect resources on those polyominoes based on whatever you're adjacent to. And there's some like, there's a special ability that lets you like expand what you can get, but the premise of it is you're trying to fit these ships inside of these polyominoes. It's like, um, scaffolding structure mm -hmm. so the big ships have more surface area so you have a lot more potential for getting resources but the smaller ships can like fit into tighter nook and crannies and mm -hmm. sometimes like your smallest ship can net you the most resources because it fits right into a slot that's completely surrounded by either resources or touching buildings that get you cool stuff as well right because like you can't place the ship on the scaffolding you have to place it near and whatever it's near it gets but also as you're building the scaffolding you will get more points based on like the tighter you build the scaffolding if that makes sense mm -hmm. right so you are incentivized to build like a, a you know clump but you're also incentivized to try and build it like a spider web with lots of holes so you can plop your yeah. ships in between so i mean that's a cool inverse proportion you know inverse relation it's inverse. And then, like you said, there is this, like, pretty cool structure here where you actually have, like, a plastic piece built into the board where these water tiles, like, as you build higher and higher, the canyon starts to flood. And so your, like, the lower scaffolding gets washed out. Or if there's, like, buildings down there, they get flooded so you can't use them. Or if you have guys down there, they can actually get, like, washed downstream and you have to go rescue them later. They're worth negative points. But that's, like, the bulk of the gameplay. And then when you take your refresh action where you collect all of your airships, which are, like, your workers off the board, that's when you can also build more scaffolding, build the buildings you've collected, kind of, like, put the stuff on the board that you've got, and then you go back to putting your airships back out there again. And, like, the bulk of the gameplay does take place in that, like, center of the board where you're putting the polyominoes and where you're throwing the ships and where you're putting meeples and stuff because and you're also building um engines on them or machines i think they're called yeah, machines um and those run too so like uh not only do you get the resources that are adjacent to the ship but you also can run the engines too and like you want to put the meeples out there first because if you build the end the machines on top of where the meeples are they will get promoted over to this area here and the higher you build the more points you'll get when you do that but also the higher you build the faster you'll start running out the game. So a lot of the game does happen in the center, which does kind of drag attention away from some of the other things. Now, most of the game is here, but there are some cool things out here that do kind of get overshadowed by all of the diff all of the moving parts of that center. Yeah. Like, there are these um, cog or gear pieces that are the same like shape and type of thing from Whistle Stop. But by the way, that's one of the few like comparisons that this and the fact that whistles are a resource. It's a like, train because I think we're building a train, like a trestle bridge we might, over yeah, a canyon. Yeah, I think so. It does. So look like, right. it's kind of a reach thematically to be yeah. like it's the same. Like you're building a. It's, a it's there's really there's train nice. whistles. Yeah, the reason why they're the same is because we put whistle in the title of both games. <laughs> but anyways, these are pretty cool. Um, but also we were talking about how there's no real way, uh, to like wipe it if yeah. there's no good ones. So yeah. So if the very, if the first flop are things that nobody's really interested in buying, 
They, I mean, there's a bunch of them, so you won't really get through the deck. Actually, there, I was able to buy one off the top of the deck at one point, but still, that that's not that's not the same. And also, there's like these cards that are uh, instant abilities, so those are pretty cool. And there was even, even like halfway through the game, I was like, oh wait a minute, I can rescue one of my drowned workers yeah. right there. I can just do that. Oh okay, I'll, I'll go do that. Now I will say, in terms of like strategy and winning the game. Like, you've got your buildings over here, and you've got your cheaper buildings that are worth less points and do, like, arguably weaker... Like, these just, like, get you resources. And then you've got your medium ones. It's a lot of, like, trading resources out there, a little bit more expensive. And then you've got, like, your big ones that take up a whole lot of surface area down here that are really expensive to buy but get you a lot of points, and they're really cool. They also get you stuff when you build them, too. Like, most of the, the small and the mediums will mostly get you points when built, the uh, big ones will get you points and other stuff when built. So they kind of feed into your engine a little bit more, too. Yeah. I, I will say, in my experience, I felt like the the advantage of building the big ones could very, very easily be mitigated at the speed at which you could build small ones. Because, like, the, yes, there is more. Like, this is worth 14 points. This is worth 5 points. That's a, a pretty big difference. But when you're building up here... Um, and you have, like, guys out there on the board that you're sliding over and promoting. Like, there's 8, 9, and 10 points up here. So right there, if I can get a 5-point um, machine and promote one or two guys over to the 9-point area, like, I've just broken the difference for a lot less money. And it's a lot easier to build scaffolding to build the smaller buildings on. Now, granted, while doing that, you are running out the game because every time you build a machine up at the top, you start drowning things down below. But what you could start drowning is other people's machines, or you their, know? Their people. Their, their ability to get resources, you know? Yeah, their people. Yeah. And, and if you're kind of bum-rushing to build a lot of the small buildings, you may want the game to end faster so other people don't yeah. have time to like get the resources to build the big stuff. Yeah, so and, and, and not only do they cost more resources, but they also take up so much more land. Like a yeah. a, a, not, a three by three isn't the common? easiest Yeah, it's not common. It's also not the it's not the easiest thing to build if you're if if one person's just building up 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 and you want to build a big space, you you're gonna have to do it all on your own. Yeah. You can build a four a uh, uh, two by two uh, with a single with tile. With a single tile, yeah. And it's going to take a couple of tiles for me to build a three by three. Probably like, like at least three, maybe? Two? Let me let me do... Oh, there's probably... Maybe mathematically you can do... I don't know if you could do it with I don't just think you two. could do it with two. I don't think so. Anyways. Regardless, that was one thing where I felt like the big ones look really flashy. I don't know how advantageous they are. The other thing that to me seemed a little like it may not have been the most balanced was the unique player abilities. Because everyone starts the game with a player ability. No, no you do draft them. You do so draft them, so you get to pick the one that you get. But there are definitely some that just seem... I, I, I don't want to say more powerful, because I haven't seen them all used in every situation. But there are some that are way easier to run and be really effective with. Like the one that I had that every time I built a scaffold that was touching, that scored two or more points, I got an additional two points. Yeah. And you can build three scaffolding in one refresh turn. So that's and getting two points, building a two-point one is not a difficult task. No, it's super easy. Yeah. So being able to build a two-point scaffolding, get two more points for it, and then be able to put a building on it, because you can build a building with just one scaffolding piece, and then promote a guy on there over... Like, there are things like that that really kind of snowballed and comboed that... Mm -hmm other player abilities would not lend to as easily. So obviously we haven't played it as much as the designers and playtesters and stuff. It just has a feeling of, again, not necessarily in balance, but more like experienced players would know the value of things. But like, and then maybe that's the word, the value. Like yeah. the value of those large tiles um, are different than what they seem at first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You may be like, oh, the bigger the better, right? I'm going to try, but... The there, amount, there's the a time and a place, and if you yes. get the right thing, you may cash in big, and it's a game swinger for you. True. But it seems like it's going to be a lot easier to make the smaller ones work for you and get points faster. All of that to say, I am overall just slightly disappointed, because I was really looking forward to this game. I was really excited. Ooh, polyominoes. Because Whistle Stop is so good. Because Whistle Stop is, well, I don't think, I think Whistle Stop is... Yeah, it's pretty good. It's probably like my second or third favorite train game. It's definitely up there. Um, but 
yeah, like, like, oh, there's polyominoes, it's like worker placement, building, like engine building, you know, all that stuff sounded cool. And all these different mechanics come together ever so slightly not perfectly. You know what I mean? I, I definitely enjoyed it, I, I think, considerably more than you did. Um, I, I do think the caveat that when you're explaining it to players, be like, hey, be careful of this. Just know that, like, just trying to figure out a way to make a big building work because you feel like the bigger the building, the more value is going to be there may not be the best thing to do. Like, this, like, kind of explaining those caveats to them, um, that's probably really important. Overall, I, I enjoyed this one a lot. I don't know if there was anything to it that, like, makes it stand out and like significantly well i mean me. yeah nowadays all the new thing with like there's no new mechanics right there's yeah. nothing new under the sun all the it's just like different blends right and, and i think other there's other games that do blend more fluidly like again i feel like these gears um grind just a little bit every once in a while the gears grind a bit you know if that makes sense yeah i mean oh I did think it was a very enjoyable game. I thought it like it looked really cool. I liked the big chunky air like these are impressively large wooden blocks, you know. There are only two components that I don't like. The two things about this game that I don't like component wise. One is the idea that we are basically building Tetris type things down here, but you can push these pieces. There's no like bottom, if that makes sense. You can like push it out. So you can there's a decent high spill factor here. And also a player color is black, but also a resource is black. Mm -hmm. That just seems like why. Actually, yeah. the first time I sorted that this game after punching it, I put like some of the coal in the black player's bag, mm -hmm. just because I I just it, like, at first glance it may look just like a meeple on its side to you. Anyway, guys, as always, there is going to be a purchase link in the description box down below if this is a game that you want to pick up. We appreciate if you use our purchase link because it's an affiliate link and we get a few pennies every time you buy something through And it. yes, it may have sound like I, I, I didn't like it as much as Wes, but I didn't want to hark on it. I do. It is overall a positive experience for me. Probably like a 6.5 if I were to have to put a number on it. I normally don't do numbers, but now I'm doing it. Anyways, he was talking about links. That's how we close up videos. Also, links. There's a link to Game Toppers down there. It's super cool. Check it out. Also, there's going to be a button on there that says subscribe so you'll never be bored. So professional.